I'm, 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 supposed to be, I'm supposed to read a letter, but I want to share a short story with you of what, how I happen to be here. I, uh, it's a story of a, of a dinner table in uh, my hometown, Damascus, where I grew up. It's a dinner table where my mom and dad, my banker brother, my, my sister, my two other sisters, we used to sit around and have dinner and listen to music every day. It's a, it's a dinner table that I miss quite a lot. Uh, Syria was full of love. It was the capital of, luck, capital of culture, Damascus once. Uh, we, gr we grew up in a cozy, lovely apartment where we were very sheltered, and all we knew was peace and love. And uh, that has changed in 2011. I, uh, I was an English teacher back then. I, uh, when the protest, when the peaceful protest started in Syria, I took to the streets. I remember my first protest. I was walking alongside the, the doctor, the lawyer, the banker, the schoolboy, the, the mother, the sister, the wife. And for the first time in Syria, I could hear my own voice. For the very first time, as I am chanting freedom, everyone chanting freedom, equality, liberty, that's the first time I heard my own voice. Sadly, it didn't last for long. After, uh, after protesting for a year, I got caught by my own police force, and I was thrown in prison for 15 days. Um, 15 days, I was tortured, electrocuted. Both of my arms were broken, two of my ribs. I almost lost my left leg, uh, but I lived. I got out, and I'm so glad that I got out because I didn't want to die in a prison cell tortured by my own police force. This is not how I imagined myself ending up. Uh, it changed for all of Syria, not just me. Suddenly, barrel bombs fall down on people. Suddenly, people are tortured to death in prison cells. Suddenly, we had to leave, and I wish we never left. I wish, I wish we didn't have to leave, because there's nothing like home. I miss that dinner table all the time. I, uh, we fled, and as you can see, I was on a dinghy. And uh, I sat alongside the doctor, alongside the banker, the mom, the sister. Syria was on that dinghy for me. And it was really sad to see, because uh, I wouldn't want my home country to be on a dinghy in the middle of the sea, sinking, because we sank. We sank, and we got picked up by the Turkish Coast Guard. I filmed my whole journey, and it was part of a BBC documentary called Exodus, Our Journey to Europe. And uh, after an, a long journey through Europe, 87 days of traveling on foot, buses, uh, lorries, I made it to the UK. And uh, I had the privilege of working on the second documentary, so I went back to Europe. I've been in Europe for nine months filming the second documentary, and nothing has changed. We are locking up people up in containers. We are building fences. We are uh, keeping people up where they are, because we don't want them to come for the governments. I noticed that nothing has changed at all. Europe is still struggling with the one million people arrived in 2015. One million people. Lebanon has over 1.5 million. <sighs> After I got to the UK, I was granted asylum. I was given a political asylum, and I'm, I've been here for a long time. And honestly, I, I wouldn't, I mean, London has been great to me. London has a long tradition of welcoming refugees and migrants, and I hope this tradition remains for a long time. Uh, I am here to read a letter that was written by an Iranian refugee who was stuck in a camp in northern France called the Jungle. And I'm sure you know about the Jungle. The, the Jungle no longer exists. It was uh, demolished. It was burned to the ground. And uh, this letter isn't just written by Hussein. And my story isn't just Hassan's story. There's nothing unique about us. It is the story of millions of people. The fact that I'm here, it feeds on my survival's guilt, because why I'm here and they're not. But I'm glad I'm here to tell the story. I'm glad to be here so I can be the voice of people who are dying in the sea, trying to seek safety and peace, fleeing from war and famine. This is Hussein's story, Hussein's letter. Dear kind people of Europe and the UK, I don't believe that in the heart of Europe, center of technology and civilization, you don't know that such a place exists. Children, women, fathers, and brothers just want to live. 
Now they are fleeing from their home and countries. You call them refugees. They are humiliated in Europe. Children, instead of drawing sweet childhood memories, are drawing the cold of winter and lack of water and food, disease, and standing in the camp's long queues. This will put the history of the 21st century to shame. In the center of Europe, cities with a population of seven to 8,000 people have been created for refugees, with cold nights and dangerous, lawless, and helpless, tiring, hungry days. Death is just a step away from refugees. Sometimes food is brought in via charities with people and people with hearts of goals, but unfortunately, it's not enough. Sleeping in tents while shivering from cold and nightmares of home, nightmares of homes on fire and death. Fear of radical extremists and fights and tear gas thrown by the police into the camps, locations, and tents. Dear kind people of Europe and the UK, history will judge us according to our actions. This will stain the heart of history and humanity, and it can never be removed. Dear people of UK and France, please open the doors to us refugees and save us. We are not terrorists. We are not soldiers. We're not politicians. We are just ordinary people in pursuit of our peaceful life. I only want to live. Death is following me like my shadow in this hellish jungle of hopes. Please open your hearts and borders to us and end the war. Thank you very much.